Okay, everyone, welcome back and hello and possibly for the last time and welcome back to Trash and Treasure. So this is the final uh, recap meeting because we've all had great weekends together, I think. Um, yeah, so congratulations to the UK artists. You, you successfully completed your exhibition over the weekend or over the week, past week. Um, Umi, you want to tell us about it or your experience? How was that? It's um, my first time doing exhibition, um, setting up the space, meeting the, the, the lovely people in Norwich. Mm -hmm. um, been very, very great, amazing experience. Um, thank you, Caroline, Genevieve, Hannah came all the way from London. Um, mm. We didn't manage she came with, to, she came to with her family, off. did she? Yes, she came oh, with wow. her family. Um, the mom, the dad, and um, mm -hmm. little brother. So um, yeah, she she arrived around half half two. Mm -hmm. and oh, I must have managed... just missed. I missed her. Yeah, yeah. So um, bring the family for a short tour in the city of Norwich, and then mm -hmm. they are set to back to London after that. Um, okay. Yeah, so the next day was the first day of exhibition and um, first day wasn't that busy, it's alright. Um, mm -hmm. I did get respond from the guest. Um, the, they said you should have put the guest book um, for people to write, you know, comment and uh -huh. feedback. So, oh yeah, yes, yes. And then I ran straight to one of the stationery shops. <laughs> and then up. I got like a... Yeah, and a, a simple book for, for them to write. And I managed to be in the gallery every day for roughly around um, two hours. So during okay. the lunchtime especially, yeah. Nice. And the feedback, it was mm. great. Um, I made a few contacts, few networking. And the gallery um, manager, happy with the, with the look and the display that we had. Mm -hmm. And yes. Caroline's work. Your work has been invite, inviting because she had a lot of the glittering uh, crypts. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> look, very attractive. Shiny, shiny. Play. Yeah. It looks crispy. so beautiful. Yes. Oh. Crispy. Yes. My crisps were um, luring people in. Mm -hmm. Everyone were like, Mac, Mac, please. They just, could, they just couldn't help themselves. They had to walk in. <laughs> we should have had yeah, yeah, they were, free they were all the passersby. <laughs> by the window, there's a huge window uh, by the gallery, so um, they pass by and they just stop and they look at Caroline's artwork and then mm. they just, okay, we want to go in and have oh, a look that's at nice. the entire exhibition. That is yeah, so, so nice. So it's great, it's great. Mm, mm. It was yeah. quite funny. Yeah. Did you see yeah. that guy, Umi, when we were setting it up? Do you remember that guy? Oh yes, he came, he, he, like, he came the next day. Oh, did he? He was like Rastafarian yes. and he had this massive hat on, like with all his Rasta hair. And he was like, mm. yeah, man. <laughs> 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 Oh, love that. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it was a great feedback though. Um, mm -hmm. He actually, um, he's a sleeper by, by the street and he saw the work and he went in. And he, he told me that, yeah, this is a good idea for me to use uh, for my for my tent. I should oh. have collect more crypts and, and yeah. I can use it for mirror. I said, oh, okay, that's a good <laughs> idea. Oh, bless him. <laughs> oh, oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> so, there's a lot of um, different, different um, family, um, social enterprises came. Mm -hmm. um, the council, city of council came as well. Um, yeah, so it was a very, very great experience. I just wish we, four of us, um, you know, we could meet up the last day and mm. celebrate the, the, the last day of exhibition. But it wasn't too long for me to just pack everything up. It took me 20 minutes and all Brilliant. sorted. Good to go. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Yeah, you know, I when I when you shared that photos of the guest book, 
um, you know, that was like when I looked at it, I was like, oh no, I should have actually got one too for the for the exhibition. But I I didn't manage to get one then, unfortunately. So what I did was I set up a Google form and shared it with the attendants because people had to people had to book in, and so I still had their email contacts. So I just shared them. Um, a Google form just to get some feedback, and I think we've also had quite quite a good response from the people who visited. A lot of people, um, a, a lot of people came to the exhibition in Malaysia and then stayed on to have a chat with all the artists, um, because I think most of us were there throughout the throughout the exhibition period. Um, I know Shake, myself, and then uh, Farita dropped in, and Casey because he's co-owner of the place. He he practically lives there. So, so I think it was quite it was quite nice because while the space was small, um, it was quite intimate. People could get up really close to the artwork, and a lot of them were quite happy to stay and chat and just ask uh, each of us individually what our work was about. And then you know we could we asked quite a lot of questions. I think and we we had sort of had a lot of time sharing and being able to share the whole the whole project with them. Yeah, so I think most of the responses from the Malaysian side was that, you know, it was a very intimate and educational experience. It was a very cozy, close-knit time talking to artists. Um, I'm just paraphrasing from some of the feedback that they've shared um, in the Google form. Um, but some people were some people were suggesting that maybe next time we could have like um, sharing sessions or even um, a dialogue mm. that we can open up Q&A. So, you know, that could be something to think about. But um, let's talk about the setting up side. You know, how, how was that experience leading up to the exhibition? Because, um, you know, it, it, it was quite difficult because all, all four of you were in various different places and you all had your own things going on as well. So how was that for you Amy, and Caroline? It was actually, it was fine for me because um, my circumstances were that it was half term. So I had Evie off because um, she's because we live in Suffolk. Well, we're on the Norfolk Suffolk border, but she goes to a Suffolk school. So Norfolk had their half term the week before. So for me personally, it was great because I could just like, well, I'm on my hands and knees framing my work most of the time anyway. Um, and she kind of like tiptoes around me, and you know, my other half, he's used to having my work everywhere so um it was fine and i just i decided to frame it because i thought well i framed up four pieces and actually when we got there umi it was fine wasn't it because hannah was on hand to she kind of just stood and held the the nails whilst we sort of hammered them into the walls but i thought they were really sweet and they weren't they weren't like really precious about their walls because some galleries in the uk can be really really strict and have a lot of like get really funny about their white walls and things um did you find that umi did you find them really quite sweet yeah i because i had um i mean before i decided to uh, approach anta ross gallery early this year i had a volunteer with them so uh, it kind of helped me to grab the overall look and yeah. feel and yeah. I actually know some of them already so yeah. um, they are quite quite helpful in the sense um, they allow us to do whatever we want yeah. to do in the space yeah it's a really nice yeah. atmosphere wasn't it it was really laid back um, it was yeah. really relaxed we had some cake <laughs> and um, yeah it was it was great it was, it, there was no problem it was really windy <laughs> <laughs> yeah, day, it was windy it? the first day. It was a bit drizzling mm. in the morning um, during yeah. the setup day, and I had to carry uh, my artwork with my bicycle, and I had to like, <laughs> like okay. that's, I have yeah. to really, really carry my artwork, and yeah. with a lot of prayer that it won't <laughs> get wet or. But everything went well. Um, uh, we got the nice space by the window right yeah. in front of the gallery and yeah, um, yeah I think just, the last day on Saturday uh, it was sunny and I love the lighting I love the lighting it reflects um, you know when it when the sun goes through the window and it 
touches your artwork, Caroline. It's some sort of like giving a different perspective and a, um effect to the lighting yeah. in the space. Yeah, the beading so, and the, yeah. the embroidery. I lo I haven't used gold thread for quite a long time. I used to stitch. Um, I remember the last piece I sold was many, many, many years ago, and I sold. I did it completely in gold metallic thread, um, for a wedding and for a golden wedding anniversary present. And um, yeah, I remember her writing to me afterwards and saying, "Because in those days we used to write letters. <laughs> there was no internet." And um, yeah, she wrote me a lovely letter afterwards and she said at certain times of the day it really glistens. But um, so, yeah, I'm just really grateful that we've all met. And um, I wondered whether we could kind of sort of carry on um, because obviously in the UK, um, the Crafts Council and the Arts Council are very keen on things like this. I don't know about the British Council. I think they probably are because they're all interlinked. And I thought it might be quite nice to have sort of like um i don't know maybe monthly or bi-monthly meetups um just a sharing space like joanne mentioned and Umi. Yeah, absolutely i think like i i think i've enjoyed most the sharing sessions that we've had throughout yeah, this residency definitely. being able to meet up with each all each of you and just share the artwork and you know what do you think or even if it's not artwork just sharing the ideas and hearing yeah. what everyone else has to say i think that wasn't I think that was my highlight of the of the residency. Yeah, Would you definitely. say that too? Yeah. What what yeah. about the rest of you? Do you have any like any highlights? Shaki, do well, you have one? Well, I think um yeah, just to uh notes on on uh your, your discussion uh, Caroline with me just now. I actually uh, I mean quite jealous with your your space, the space that you guys had. Um it's like right next to the road and like people can see and so on. So uh, there is pro and con uh, for both for both space that we have uh, both in Malaysia and also UK. Uh, but yeah, this the space that you have in had in UK. Um, I think it uh it it, it interact and um get a lot of uh the walk ins compared to mm -hmm. us. Like we all on on the first floor, also the second floor, oh, <laughs> the second okay. floor. But but yeah, um, I think a lot of people actually come in um to the space uh in terms of like some people know about the space and also um uh some of them actually really wanted to go and check out a lot of um exhibitions so most of them people that we know that all we follow on Instagram so that's 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 great but yeah I mean good job for 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 that um it's I think. Um, we've been talking about that, so I just asked Joanne at the end of um, um, our our session when we wrap up everything. Uh, you know what else? Um, after this, um, uh, I mean definitely, um, it takes a lot of effort and like you know resources and time and uh, you know to to pl to plan and run this this thing. But I think to be honest, it's a really good platform for artists, especially. Um, to just again like just do sh the sharing that sh that 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 portion of of the re residency is actually what what makes this residency different than other residency because there's like, some other residency that I know um you just go into the residency and do whatever you want to do and you probably like meet other artists to like maybe talk about things but there is no common interest or common topic that you talk to each other so with this one um, the topic itself is it's it's very common and it's very relatable. Like you know, it's it's, it's no brainer. Like even we we go to different parts of the world, we still talk about trash all the time. So it makes sense, and people can relate to it. And a lot of people actually relate to it when we did the exhibition. I think you see that right, Join. Yeah, I agree. we all. I yeah, think when so. when people did come, they they realized that oh yeah, you know that. We all we all make trash and oh they is they start thinking about yeah you know we we do make a lot of trash don't we like oh how can I how can I do something about the ones that I have at home so you know it, it I think that's great because then we've got some people thinking about it at least and then hopefully that uh, translates into maybe some kind of action on their part down the road um, and I agree with you Shaki I think the idea of that sharing and having that that monthly meetup sessions to just talk about what work we're doing. Um, I would like if, if we could even um, expand, expand that and have more people joining in 
and not just the core uh, trash treasure residency artists because then you know, we'll be able to spread the message forward and you know get more people into the conversation yeah um yeah but you know shaki like going back to you again what what, mm. what highlights do you have of, of the residency did you do you have any notable um, any, any highlights of your own personal experience my i think my personal experience experience is actually to be honest just uh meeting up with every one of you guys and learn from each one of you guys if you see like a lot of our work um we we sort of like learn from each other, especially like me. I learn with uh, from from Caroline from Fariza a lot on on how I can actually manipulate the material. I don't really work material, but you guys did the the hard part where you guys experiment things and stuff, and I just basically adapt to whatever I do. So uh, that 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 really helped. I mean, I think that's the best things that. Um, resident res, residency should should come out with because I, I don't think some other residency have that. So be, be having you know other artists share share their skills or share their experiments and stuff to you is really, really, really helpful. And I think that's the highlight is definitely sharing sharing our 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 project and like we we all also like oh you guys if you do that and you guys oh, do yeah, this yeah, and, yeah. you know it's yeah. really, really really nice and yeah I think um. Um, the idea I, I I hope personally I just hope that um this project doesn't die here. We can actually carry forward. Um I'm not sure how uh, both uh, Umi and Joe and look at this but um you know if you guys are op open for other of uh, for any of us to basically continue and run the same thing with your mentorship or with your your guidance. Um, using the same branding because I think for me um, the brand is already there and you know why not just like you yeah. know use the, the same brand and work with other community because mm -hmm. I think there is a lot of community that we can touch in um, and I know some of the community like uh, I know like a few uh, kids arts kids community that we can work with and so on and so on so there is a lot of potential again um, mm -hmm. like uh, as simple as uh, if you remember um Fire Sulaiman, uh, one of the artists who came for our yep. exhibition, he brought his. Was well, he the one that, that brought the Wayang Kulit? So, so yeah. this, this artist, Fire Sulaiman, he came. He came into the exhibition and he was very interested in the work that we did, and he himself um is go. He's going to areas where indigenous tribes live. Is that correct, Shaki? And he's been correct. collecting the the waste that the kids have been throwing away. So it's discarded toys and things that they've been playing with that they just chuck to the side of the road and he collects them and he's, I think now he's trying, what's he doing Shaki? Is he trying to teach so them to So he, yeah, he's, he's actually uh, running this program to um, nurture these kids to learn uh, basic, uh, basic knowledge, um, simple English, simple, you know, histories and so on, uh, but using arts uh, to activate it. So he wanted to do this wayang kulit, uh, the shadow puppet thing, but use the 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 waste material that, that the kids actually disregard. And I think it, it, there is there is a relation. And Definitely. you know, if anyone of us actually free, we can actually go in and probably get a few more other artists mm -hmm. to do it. Yeah, yeah. I think that would be something yeah. interesting. Yeah, mm. that would be really interesting. Did you get his contact detail, detail Shakir, or not? Yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. Uh, and actually, Casey is actually working with him on. Oh, okay. Yeah, work, okay. Yeah. Brilliant. So, nice. Brilliant. So, I yeah, think I mean, that kind of production method where you span, like, you're kind of bridging education, indigenous knowledge, craft, ideals is amazing. Yeah. Really definitely. cool. Yep. And I think oh, I, I did want to say something, didn't I? Yes, I did. <laughs> Um, Caroline, I was just I was, I was actually telling during during the exhibition in Malaysia, I, I was telling a lot of people how during our sharing sessions, you know, your enthusiasm and your, you know, your wow experiments with plastic and how you really dove really deep into the crisp packets and what you could do with them. Um, yeah, I was just telling people how your enthusiasm like fed into the rest of us. I think that really got if well, I don't I don't know if I'm speaking too much for everyone, but for myself, I think. That was one of the biggest motivators, and I felt like I really, oh, I was really, you. I was really inspired by the things that you were working with. Oh, 
Yeah. Oh, thank you. I am a bit crazy. <laughs> and the crazy is good in a good kind, in a good way. But I live in a very quiet countryside, and I, I, I don't speak to very many people. <laughs> when I do, I go. <laughs> Um, but, you know, you said you haven't worked with Gold Thread in a long time and then now you've had a chance to do it again. Yeah. And, you know, and Farisa, yeah. you, you yourself also said that you haven't been in arts in a long time and, you know, the residency was a way to get back into it. So, you know, did, Definitely. You, did, did both of you feel like the residency has, has helped you in some way, like to reconnect to something that you've been working on in the past? What do you think? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, like, uh, I really enjoyed this uh, residency. I, I, I think I mentioned, right, like, when you invited me, I was like, what am I going to get into? What am I getting into? <laughs> and I'm so glad that I said yes, like, you know, or I'll be stuck at home. And, and I mean, I agree with uh, Shakir and uh, Caroline. Everybody's opinion about this, and, and I totally enjoy it, um, especially these sessions that we have, our, our bi-weekly um, sharing sessions. I mean, frankly, this is actually <laughs> for the past few years. This is this is it. This is my social life. <laughs> this bi-weekly meeting thing. This is my social life. This is it. You know, um, it's not me too. Really, yeah, me and my kids. So, uh, uh, I, I during the podcast, I was telling uh, Joanne, and, uh, you know, I ran, I couldn't run. And I realized, yeah, probably because I hardly meet people these days. So when you get opportunity, opportunity to talk to people tend to kind of go on and go off tangent once in a while, all that. But uh, I totally enjoy the, um, all the sharing and seeing how everybody works. And it's just so inspiring. And you're thinking like, you know, your mind is sort of like something just starts racing. And thinking, wow, what if I, uh, what do you call it? Um, I'll do something with Chucky or Casey. And yeah. I've never, never actually uh, thought of going to multimedia or anything digital in that sense. And uh, trying to see, and then like seeing like uh, Joanne's work with uh, all her uh, mod podge and stuff. Mm -hmm. and, you know, okay, that's going to be the next thing I need to try out, you know. And of course, with uh, Caroline and you know, and Umi stuff as well, and Genevieve, and yeah, take care, everything, you know, yeah. it's been fun. It was fun. But that's the thing. Now you're like, okay, what am I going to do next? Yeah. <laughs> you want to go do everything. Yeah, you got to do a bit of everything. And then you start thinking, maybe I can try and combine all these things together and see how, you know, you create something different. So I think that's the best thing about um, doing this residency. Um, and especially working with the plastic, the ironing. I had a lot of fun with that. I've still got some bits and now I'm collecting uh, <laughs> whatever I can get, especially the green plastic bag that's really hard to find. So I, I'm, you know, I, I realize there's only one place right now that I can find it. So I tell my mom, please, or you maybe you get that from the grocery, keep it for me. So, uh, yeah, so we'll see for what was the next thing. But uh, totally enjoyed it. And thank you so much to everyone, especially to uh, you know, Caroline and uh, Umi and Hannah. I mean, you guys used uh, some material that I sent, we sent over and I, that I sent over. And it all turned out really very beautiful. So, uh, Absolutely. Yeah, great. Yeah, it was so, really beautiful. And Caroline, do you feel like you would, you would start, would go back to gold thread embroidery or, or do you think you've... Yeah, you've... yeah. I'm going to do some, um, I've, got to, I've run out of beads, <laughs> um, that particular size. And I really liked working in that size because I haven't, because they, they weren't too small, but and they weren't too big, if you know what I mean. They were just the right size. So yeah, I'm going to go down our local craft shop and see if I can get that particular size because... I'm a bit rusty on bead sizes and there's since I bought those I think I bought those probably over 20 years ago they've just been sat in my drawer and um, there's probably about a billion different types of those particular beads now so yeah definitely for sure and I'm going to do some more iris folding I did one yesterday um, on like a little shared group that I found on a Monday evening and that was really nice so um, and that's what I was saying. I weirdly, Is that the one with the I picked up a piece of paper. Yeah, yeah, oh, I did right. that one yesterday. But this one, I picked up this piece of paper, and it was all about friendship. And um, I'm going to have to get my glasses to read it. But yeah, it says um, friendship is the sweetest and most satisfactory connection in life. 
It has notable effect upon all states and conditions. It relieves our cares, raises our hopes and abates our fears. Um, and I just thought that was a really quite weird, the way that I just picked that up just before the meeting, because I'm just starting another one. But yeah, so it's definitely sparked all sorts of different ideas for, for me and my practice. So thank you. I'm really grateful. Um, I'm trying to think of Umi. I, I was thinking maybe you and Joanne could think of another theme. Mm. <laughs> And apply to the British Arts Council again. <laughs> yes. Well, um, during this, process, I mean, the, the exhibition show, um, I was approached by Martina. She's from the Norwich City Council, and they were having an initiative called Savvy uh, Food Norfolk. So they were impressed with the exhibitions, the residency, uh, the theme, and the idea of us exchanging trash and um, treasured trash. So they were asking about, do we do workshops? Um, can we speak about our work? And they also um, connected me, I mean the us, uh, they, they actually introduced us to this social enterprise called Scoop My Bean. So what does, I mean, what do Scoop My Bean does is, they are like the Tinder for the trash. So yeah, so they connect um, manufacturers, cafes, restaurants, um, then the, the waste coming from the big player, from this restaurant, from the cafes, and they will bring the trash keep the trash and then they will segregate and distribute the trash to those who wants to use the trash. So I told them we are a bunch of people who like to play with trash. Um, in, in a nicer way, we are the artists who actually treasure trash. So they kind of um, excited to, to, to take this step further because they don't see the angle of crafters, artisans, artists working with trash. So they do have connection with um, companies, with manufacturers, but not with artists. So I will keep in touch yeah, with them. Um, they are, yeah. I reckon, so they, I, reckon that could be, I reckon that's part of the upcycling bid that the um, upcycle, they called it, because um, I was in a group um, and we won the People's Choice Award, but Scoop were there they were on a table next to us okay and they were a group of yep. students from the uea and they did like some um app didn't they where they can bring in manufacturers trash and then redistribute it and they're, tr they're yeah. at one but our, okay. we won the people's choice award because we went around the back of sainsbury's and got a load of um, orange peel i'll sh i'll share you the links um but Martin Blackwell was the guy in charge of it. But it was really businessy. It wasn't artisan like I am. And I felt it was very um, monetary. It was all about money. And it was all about saving money and reducing costs for businesses. But I think it wasn't like this. It wasn't artistic in any way. And Martin Blackwell, who was there, who's head of operations for Norwich City Council, he, he, he was just a different kind of guy. He had a different hat on. Do you know what I mean? So it would be interesting to see what the conversation between him and Martin is. Um, I'll, get, I'll, I'll send you the links, but Scoop were really nice. They were a nice bunch of people, and I, th I thought they would win. They won about, I think they won £1,500, um, and our table won £150 each. So we were, we were really pleased with that. Um, but I'll share, on my Instagram page, you'll see information about it, but it will be during 2020. But it was like two 12-hour um, days in a tent in a park in Norwich. I know. It was, it was crazy. It was so tiring. And we just got together. A bunch of strangers were put together. And then we had to pitch. And it, it was a bit, it was quite, quite scary. 
that <laughs> sounds that sounds like a really um, intense two days. Intense. Yeah. 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 And actually there were a couple of ladies on our table that I just found myself, I just got such a bad headache because they just shouted. Oh, they just shouted at everybody the whole time. And I, I just took a back step and I just made some paper with the orange peel and my daughter made some candles and, and I let them do the pitch because I'm not a businesswoman. Um, and I'm, I'm not, I'm not very good at selling and marketing, really. Well, I mean, um, we can always get the inspiration from all these big players who, who make money out of it. But in context of trash treasure, I would say, we can have like a community of artists, crafters, artisans, um, like a archive of what we do with the trash collections. So like Caroline, do I can say maybe specialization on your scripts, I think, and then Fariza will definitely be on your plastic exploration. And I can see um, every one of us have um, specialization already, like um, Hannah worked with the papers, I work with the tea bags, and so many areas that you can actually um, focus and branch it out. At the same time, we can um, spread awareness about how we go about these materials. Um, yeah, I think to, to extend this conversation in the future, it's no longer about trash. It's always about the materials. Um, so I would love to bring this conversation not just between um, the UK and Malaysian artists, eight of us, uh, we can have this platform um, like an open source, like a, like a website where people can just come in. Um, if they're interested to work with plastic, then they will have a look at Fariza's exploration. And they can also share their work in progress and you know upload their images or their work in progress. So it starts from eight of us and then hopefully it will grow. Yeah. And that's the, the whole idea of having this um, residency, not just having it during five months period of time, but to extend this and to create awareness about uh, the materials that actually we tend to um, forgot. Like we always see waste as waste, but after this residency, I always think waste will be my first material for me to work on. Um, moving along after this. So I want to focus on working with waste material. So I think tea bag is one of it. Um, uh, fabric is interesting, um, but I had this input from uh, the city council, Martina. She actually told me the, the biggest waste in the UK uh, it's actually coming from potatoes and second one is bread Ooh. so I can see there's a potential yeah starch and bread that's interesting and third something one is milk mm. yes so imagine we can do something with bread I'm sure we can do something with bread and definitely with potatoes so yeah. If we can gather, like Casey, you have a lot of data, you collected data, um, waste coming from Malaysia. So, um, yeah, there's that's, that's a possibility for us to extend this um, in a bigger context, not just between eight of us. Um, extend this, create more networking, and yeah, hopefully we can have a treasure, trash treasure 2.0. Yep. And I actually okay, love what yeah. you I love what you said what to me about the yeah. about these people who are interested with and and you know having seen the exhibition they realize that they can look at artists or they can turn to artists um to connect them to these waste materials. And you know, I think that is already um a starting point as well that hopefully other artists might be interested to start their own version of Trash Treasure and to start their own communities within, the, within their own uh, networks. And, you know, you, I, I like what you also said about the open source and, you know, having people share their work. And, you know, that, I think that also expands our own community um, to beyond just the eight of us. So, 
yeah, I I hope that we can keep in touch with um with those organizations and then maybe we can keep the conversation going if they are interested in hearing from us um like as a sharing session or like a dialogue and we can get we can get them interested as well. I think that would be quite cool. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I also agree. Um like I like what Omi so mentioned just now, um, if we can have a place where we can share our um, process. Um, and that's what we did at, at the Malaysian exhibition. We have this one area that we put like our stuff, our, our process stuff, experiment stuff and everything. Um, because most of us actually have a product. So um, we also have this process bit that we put up. Um, it's interesting, like for example, for me, uh, people will ask, oh, what kind of, Material is that because I project onto it and they can, can't really see it. So I can actually grab the material and show it to them. Um, it's really interesting. Uh, and based on my experience on the other um, virtual residency, uh, they actually encourage us to do it. Uh, um, I, I, there is an art, artist studio uh, part within the website that we can actually up, uh, update regularly, talking about uh, WIP and stuff. I don't think it's necessary to have it for this residency, but um, yeah, we can share it on our uh, you know, Instagram or if there is a, a means for us to share with you yeah. guys, we can make it look nice and stuff. It will be something interesting to show the process. So I think a lot of people just miss miss up the, the rest of it by looking at the final product and not looking at the process of it. Mm -hmm. And I think it's great that we, at, in, for the Malaysia exhibition, we have the process part where we talk about, you know, what how we reach to the end, you know, it's, it's really interesting. Yeah. yeah. I, I think a lot of people were quite attracted to your shiny foil cutout. And also I think they were very, they were very drawn to Farita's um, plastic, plastic cell-like experiments. And um, we actually had a notice that said, you know, please do not touch the artwork, but you know, people kept going to it and looking at us like, can we touch it? I want to touch it. It's asking me to touch it. So, you know, we, we say, okay, okay, you know, pick it up and, and have a feel of it because I think some of the experiments, the plastics were soft and then some of them were harder. So that, that tactile feedback was quite, um, got quite a lot of good response from the people who actually touched it. So, yeah, and I think it would be think, great if we can share that um, online as well. Yeah. What, what I noticed um, from, if, I, if you saw my images I shared in our WhatsApp group, um, if we go for an exhibition, a lot of people actually view the artwork from a distance. You have to stand a little bit further to see the overall of the artwork. But with this kind of exhibition, Fresh Treasure, what I noticed, they have to go really, really close to the artwork. And they need to see from the sideways, what does this material made from? And their hand, yeah, you're right, Joanne. Um, there's no point of us putting do not touch because they will they just go and try and feel the material. Um, but... Um, to improvise the next time if we mean to have this kind of uh, um, sharing again, I think you're right, Shaki. We need to show the process rather than showcasing the outcome of it. But our process of making it is much more interesting. Like Caroline, you you know, you cut them one by one and Pariza, you use your heat gun to, you know, melt the, the plastics and Joanne, how you do with your mod torch. That is much more strong uh, storytelling um, to incorporate with the exhibition. Uh, and I also noticed a lot of them, the question about how do you guys do it? Um, how do you... Oh, this piece is amazing. It doesn't look like trash. Caroline's work, um, it doesn't look like it's coming from the trash at all because it's so beautiful so i have to explain to them like okay this is how she worked caroline she's she's an embroidery artist but then she become a hoarder for the crypt's plastic now <laughs> so i have to explain it again and i wonder oh we should have like um you know images of the stories how we work um, from the beginning until the end so i think we i mean i myself in terms of the uk part 
uh, it will be great if I can just um, have a showcase about the story of the process of how the artists make the work. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think for I think for most part, like everybody just they 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 just kind they were quite taken aback by how it was made out of trash. Yeah, because they I think everyone has produced such a high such high quality work that it just looked as if it was made out of something complete, something very precious and something that wasn't, um, so, you know, destined for the bin. Um, yeah, I think a lot of, like to answer your question, Caroline, I think a lot of people wanted to hold my, my sculpture because they weren't really sure how heavy it was. And, but then also because the, um, a lot of Genevieve sketches were facing the sculpture, so it was quite easy for me to point out which ones um, inspired me so the shape oh, of okay. the bone yeah. yeah yeah so they they looked at it and they turned back and they, oh okay and then they make the connection so oh, that was quite a nice uh, yeah it was yeah. quite a nice so they thing can to see have. the link with the materials yeah and the, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah amazing yep. i mean i've i really wanted to see the lantern and the digital work you know the production process mm -hmm. with Shakir and Katie and then and your piece as well jo, I really wanted to kind of like yeah be near it to get the scale yeah. of it I, I wish feel it, it could have been but, there mm, Katie, yeah, Katie, like, Casey's artwork was very intriguing because it was the one that produced, you yes it produced the background music for the entire exhibition, uh -huh. um, yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> like from Friday to Sunday, all we heard was like, eh, 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 and then it stops for a while, and, eh, eh, and it continues again, um, which is actually quite soothing. And I don't, I don't see it? it as a joke at all. I actually think that it was no. quite soothing. Um, Casey, do you want to tell us more about your about your artwork? Like, yeah, please tell tell us what what people thought about it, and if you're uh, uh, hello, hey, hello. I also forgot what people thought about it, but, uh, <laughs> but throughout the process, I think I have, uh, I think it's fun throughout the SEDRC process because it's, uh, even when I try to write the artist statement, I think I discover a lot of myself in the process. There's a part where I have to make decision where I have to take a new piece or I have to uh, use the scrap and so on. So yeah, I think it's interesting. Mm. Uh, I actually still want to add a few things to the case, but I don't have enough scrap for now. So I'm actually still waiting uh, when client left any scrap or whatever that is big enough for me to actually use. Yeah, I actually want to mount the monitor uh, sort of like hanging on top of the overall devices. Mm. instead of mm. now is at the corner so yeah i'm still that's why i haven't really took any proper i took the videos and photo for documentation purpose but as i took that felt like it's still missing certain things that i really want them to be in yeah so i right. think i will continue as long as i saw a scrap that is uh, big enough that i can use yeah mm. so it's a it's a growing machine. Um, just, just in case you, all, you you guys don't know Umi and Caroline, uh, Casey's uh, title for his artwork is Super Solution, Dance Like There's No Tomorrow. So that, that's, the name of the, that's the name of the art piece. And I think some people were, yeah, I think most people were quite intrigued, right, Casey? They went over and they were just watching it. And, you know, I think, I think maybe the, the general feeling that I got from it was people were trying to make sense of what they were what they were looking at but then after having read the whole um, artist statement about how it how that microscope is almost dancing is it if I, I, I might be I might be quoting this wrong correct me Casey but it's like the it's as if the microscope is dancing and walk going around the the collage of fish packets and it's the idea of like what Casey has been sharing with us, the idea of you know looking for a solution, for a solution, for a solution, and it's like a never ending dance. Um, yeah, I thought I thought that was pretty impressive. Is um, it is is Casey Tan's um, piece on any of the Instagram posts? 
Yes, it is. Um, if you went to, I think if you went to some of the recent ones, especially the ones with the Malaysian exhibition. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, if you if you if you scroll over further further to maybe the third image, or so, then you should be able to see it um, in action. You'll be able to see it moving. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, I've got and one that, of it. Is, uh, is that on your feed? Uh, it's on the trash oh, treasure in trash Instagram. treasure one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, right now, I'm in the process of uploading um, things to the website because we we recorded a walkthrough of the exhibition before we took it down. So I'm okay. going to put that up onto the website so that you can have a look at it also. Um, okay. Yeah. Cool. A little bit delayed on my part. Sorry. <laughs> No, no, uh, no, no worries. No. I think Joanne, um, moving forward, what no. I can suggest, we can also upload um, every artist's um, images, their work in progress as well. Um, and their completed artwork, yes. So that, yeah, so yeah. there's a story from the beginning to the end. And definitely everybody can, can have a view and closer look at every single images. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, but I've got like one interesting question to all of you, especially to Casey, Shakir, and Fariza. I mean, you, you. I'm not sure whether correct me if I'm wrong that you've never worked with um, waste material before. I mean, how do you find working in these residencies the first time when you were given all these materials, trash coming from the UK and do you think it is possible for you guys to work with these materials in the in the future? I um to be honest, it is quite overwhelming at first because again, like I, I rarely work on um you know material and most of the material that I use for other project, not really for my art project, is you know we buy a new one. You know we never use it from scratch. So um, to, to have this kind of material, material lying around, uh, it is quite overwhelming. And I, I think I, I, wait, I waited until like towards and few weeks of the residency before, before of our, our, our exhibition to like really start working on the material. And by then, I've already have this, uh, you know, help from Caroline and Fariza, um, you know, uh, experimenting on, on all, all of the material uh, which which give me this courage to work on. Um, I think definitely I would want to actually explore more about it. Uh, not only just um, physical waste material like you mentioned just now the, the organic waste, waste material and so on. So there will be something interesting to, 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 to see what we can do with it. Um, but um, again I need to like also balance out uh, because most of my work, I created it on on uh, on a digital platform first. On a, it's a digital, um, you know, output first. Um, I rarely work on on physical. But moving forward, um, I do want want to actually explore. But probably as a as a um, how to say add up value to to whatever um, you know digital work that I've done. Like you know, being at um, Casey's place at FabU, uh, it, it gives a lot of idea. I think same goes to join and Bariza. There's constant, you know, things happening every day. So three D printing is printing at the back, like laser cutting and so on and so on. So there's a lot of things happening, and it, it generates a lot of idea in 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 term of of course you create trash, but at the same time you can also reuse and upcycle upcycle a lot of other trash that we've created. So even like what Casey then with his his um you know his his work, uh he actually create more trash, uh by actually uh doing doing the machine. But at the same time, all of that trash actually come for another trash from the the client's trash and stuff. So it's it's this upcycling idea and so on. It's really nice. Um and I I guess it it give us. The sense of awareness about okay, you know, next time when you wanted to cut, go into a specific project, how can you how can you actually tackle on this kind of material in terms of okay, don't think about buying new one first, like how you can actually upcycle whatever you have, you know, something like that. Yeah. 
yeah, that's I think what I get from from the essence. I'm sure about Fariza. Um, you share. <laughs> I'm actually very curious to see how you move forward, you and Casey, you move forward, yeah. Because I think we mentioned about digital trash. Mm, mm, that's yeah, why that's... I'm actually very curious to see you expanding on that idea. True, you know, yeah. Not that's... just physical, but really looking into digital trash. Digital, that's yeah, that's something. something correct. Yeah, yeah we, 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 didn't, we didn't manage to actually really explore that, uh, yeah, explore um, that for, yeah. for, for this one. So yeah, maybe if next one, if you guys were running any other residency or no, it, it doesn't need to be a residency. Just in, if there is any project that mm. we think that okay, let's let's activate this. Yeah. Um. Let's let's do it. Why not? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm so curious to see how you guys will. Do. I don't know whether it's manipulation of sound or I mean your whatever waste sound waste that you have. It's, it's can, that you yeah. Have. I can. It's it's kind of sad. So at the end, it was like, oh shit, we send me the. The clips yeah, that she she recorded, I was like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> you right, managed right, to actually right. really play around with it. But yeah, I mean, definitely, I mean, if if we have more time or you know, there is other yeah, other yeah. people, we can explore that. Why not? Yeah, so that's something I look forward from both you and Casey is to see how nice. you guys like you know explore that you know, digital trash. You know? Anything that you guys have like you know that you want to get rid of, but then use it back again to your work and stuff. Like, so it's good. Um. Yeah, I, I would definitely, I am actually already, um, uh, uh, what do you call it, planning on using, uh, I still have some remnants from Genevieve's uh, fabric and all that, I'm still going to use that. I think the first thing that when we got our trash from UK, the first impulse was to, I mean, immediately was to be collage, you know, but then as we took our time to rethink about what we're going to do, what we're going to do, and of course, um, inspired by Caroline's uh, ironing, <laughs> then you know it, it, it sort of like developed into something else which I would not have experimented with ever if I had not joined uh, this residency so um, but on a personal note more of like I have not worked with trash per se but uh, more of like my own trash like you know uh, reusing whatever materials that I have like paper um, especially paper I think you know, we tend to uh, use paper a lot and um, so uh, I try to use that back you know, by making collages and stuff. But otherwise, yeah, trash, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have, uh, I wouldn't have quite especially plastic that would not cross my mind. So it was really exciting to think that um, you know, when you iron it, you're creating something uh, different and I think that was key. That was something that I needed to experience, um, not just taking and, and just plonking it onto my artwork. It, I, I like that idea of like, okay, it's, it's, you know, you see something coming out of it. Yeah. And I, I, yeah. And I really enjoy, I, I had, uh, I think I met more, well, there was a fashion designer, came to the, oh, wow. right? Yeah. I remember the guy. Oh, wow. Yep. Yep. Very, very oh, wow. sharply dressed uh, yes, couple. Right. Mm -hmm. Wow. I, I think they admired your, like, they, they admired your work, didn't they, Farita? I, 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 I don't know, they seem to be take, taken in by it and, I, mm. and they were wow. talking about how, you know, we, we create uh, something out of it, like fabric, out of wow. it, create a skirt or he was talking about corset and you know, like, you know, that'd be really nice. That'd be well. amazing. Uh, you never know, yeah. do you? You never ever, this is what I love about exhibitions and art, you never ever know who's going to walk in through yeah. that door. Yeah. And have so a chat with you. Yeah. It'd be great if, if actually he does take that on. Mm. I told him, hey, okay, if you ever do this, just let me know to see what, what happens, you know, if he does create something out of, you know, if he makes something out of that. But uh, um, the, I enjoyed, I, I like the space that we had the exhibition. I mean, Pablo Cafe, I think the best thing is because it's a cafe, so you don't feel, um, most people when they're at the gallery, they tend to be self-conscious. Yeah. And, you know, they, Artwork, you know, I yeah. have to put on my pungent cap, and, you know, that kind of thing. So, but I think this really allowed people to really relax and then yeah, um, nice. have a cup of coffee, sit down, have a chat, and yeah. actually spend time. And the fact that um, the artists were there, you could also talk to them. You know, so it was, I, I really enjoyed the, the time there at, at the cafe. Yep. I think my, my biggest challenge. Yeah. My biggest challenge is when you, for me, is to be truly circular. That is my biggest 
challenge because um, I think with my own creative practice to remain completely circular is like almost impossible. Um, but also talking about sustainability, it was interesting because from I listened to a couple of talks with the Crafts Council because they've had Collect this weekend, which is like a big, posh, global, international craft fair in London. And, um, and they were talking about sustainability, but they were talking about it, which I, th I, I find very important. Sustainability as in sustaining your own creative practice and sustaining yourself and self-care which I thought was really good to hear. It wasn't just about the materials. It wasn't just about the processes. It was about, you know, ourselves as well as artists. Um, so I think for me, this residency has actually helped me personally, not just my art practice. Um, so it'd be interesting to see if anybody else feels the same way. Yeah, I, I was, I wanted to add add on to Farisa's point and we talk about all these sustainability and circular practice that we are having. So currently we have 5R, right? Refuse, reduce, repurpose. I think we're adding another R into this, which is recreate. Um, you, yeah, you're giving um, a second life, second life to the waste. So we recreate um, life to the waste so it's a very interesting and i could not imagine for me to create artwork 100 percent coming from waste material from the, the the surface of my print printed on the ink that i made it from and to the extent i roll my artwork and bring to the gallery using uh, the the newspaper that Pariza gave, so it's hundred percent completely from trash. So I'm 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 very proud of it. Yeah, very proud of it. And there's a lot of possibility for us to move forward um, with the context of playing with waste. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Agree. I I think what Caroline mentioned just now. Um. I think on, on our side at uh, the, the, the collective that we, we've been running, we do talk about sustainability a lot, um, not in terms of the, the, the waste itself, but um, it, it does actually correlate with each other. Of course, you know, we wanted to make sure the, the, the environment, um, the way we live um, is sustainable, but at the same time, we ourselves need to make sure we are sustainable in, in making whatever we wanted to make. Um, and it does it does actually give uh this reason of um you know answering the question that why actually we do this like i i keep asking my, my, my myself I, I am i really an artist or i'm just like you know this this someone trying to be an artist so at the end of the day it's always about okay why why you wanted to do it and it all come from from your hearts and um to 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 be aware that you are create you are doing that and also at the same time to make sure you can sustain yourself doing it for a long 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 time and um it's great to, to see to see all of us like you know trying to do that like i'm I, i'm i'm only like trying to to, to get into the i you know create my own art um for less than like two years right now like Farizah's already, and then knowing Fariza, Fariza already like been in the art scene for like really long time and still doing art and stuff. And a lot of you guys actually still already been doing this for a while. And, you know, it does give the sense of, you know, it doesn't need to be just a, sing just a singular thing. And, and having this thought of, you know, how you can actually make this a really livable life that you wanted to continue working on you know so yeah it gives a different perspective and different meaning and yeah it's a it's a very refreshing um experience i would say um having this 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 residency and meeting everyone so yeah thank thank you for that thank you yeah i think it was just great to have everybody and to have met 
um, everyone, you, Genevieve, uh, you, Caroline, Genevieve, Umi, and Hannah. Um, and also for Faridza and Casey, whom I've not actually met before before the residency. So you know, I've I've learned a lot from here in Malaysia as well as over there in the UK. And I think the residency was great because it. I feel like I would not have been able to meet you because our disciplines wouldn't have crossed um, outside of the residency. So having had it um, and for all of us to come together from all these different dis disciplines to tackle this one topic and to share ideas about you know how we work and what are, what kind of cultures we have and you know the our relationship with rubbish and the things we throw away. Um, it's been a really enlightening experience. Um, it, I, I don't want to take too much of your time, but you know, before we before we leave, do you have any final parting notes? Um, any thoughts? Any any feedback or just any last things that you that you might want to share with with us as a group? Umi, would you like to start first, or would you like to end it? Okay. okay. Um, first of all, um, apologize if I, I mean along the way during this residency if I um, say something wrong or whatever that I sh shouldn't say <laughs> in the first place uh, and secondly I think it's been a great honor meeting you all getting to each one of you making friends and I hope um, after this we'll still keep in touch and Caroline Genevieve and I I think the artists from the UK, we thought of keeping um, the WhatsApp group um, still going on and still spark the conversation and definitely we'll still keep in touch. Um, so if every one of you think that there is a possibility or um, um, future involvement that needs participation or help from eight of us, do let do let us know and we'll keep in touch. So we are the treasures. <laughs> so yeah. thank you. Thank you, Joanne. Thank you, Joanne, for this. As well. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Oh, thank and the British, you. We, we British did it together. British Council. Yes, and thank you to the British Council. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. This has been recorded so they know they, they know that we appreciate them very much. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, thank you, Joanne, and uh, really, you guys did a lot of funny, of course, the, the hard work, I, I can imagine all the hard work. No, I, I think we did what was necessary to to make sure that everything was rolling and to make sure that the yeah. con that there was momentum in the conversations and the things that we did, but yeah. um, really, it, we needed all eight of us to come together and work, work, to, work together to make it happen, so I'm yeah. very grateful to have met all of you. And to have had this yes. chance yeah, to work likewise. together with all of you. So thank you. Same, same, same. Okay. <laughs> well, if that if if no one else has any um has any uh final words, um thank you once more. Terima kasih. And mm -hmm. all the best in your all the best in your private uh personal creative practices. And I wish you all the best. Keep in touch online yeah, okay. the yeah. world is so much smaller definitely. now that we're connected online so let's not definitely in touch yeah yeah okay yes thanks okay. everyone thank you for tonight bye. take care bye bye, bye. Oh, shall we take bye. a screenshot let's take a screenshot one oh yes. okay. yeah okay all right Jesse, on. i don't on. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> we'll, we'll put we'll, 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 put a, we'll photoshop a photo of PC from a from a previous from a previous one. Okay, everybody, one, two, three, and and one more, and one more. Okay, thanks everyone. Take care. Bye. Have a good day.